Hello class. If we look at this molecule right here, ethylamine, what would you predict the splitting patterns to be? But before you predict splitting patterns, you need to figure out how many signals there are going to be. So take a moment, look at the molecule, predict how many signals there would be, and then predict the splitting pattern. That would be a great exercise. Okay. So if we look at it here, this carbon right here has three protons. And so those three right there are going to be equivalent. So we'll call those HA. Now, if you look at, if we expand these out, we have two hydrogens here. Now let's see here. Okay, we have those two hydrogens. Now the question is, are those equivalent? And they are in fact equivalent because there's going to be a plane of symmetry. So those are HB. And then those hydrogens right there are going to be equivalent as well. Okay, so we have HC. So we have three signals. Now predicting the splitting pattern. Okay. Now HA right here, if we expand out these hydrogens, A, 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 we see that that is one, two, three bonds away from HB. So HA does in fact couple with HB. So HA right here is going to couple with HB. And the n plus 1 rule states that, hey, there's two equivalent hydrogens, so 2 plus 1 should be a triplet. So we predict those to be a triplet. Okay, and I like to just put those, I could do something like this, HA equals a triplet. Now HB, on the other hand, is going to be... <clears throat> Well, HB right here is attached to that carbon, which then is attached to that carbon. And how many hydrogens are attached to the, that carbon right here? There's three. So three plus one equals four, which is a quartet. Okay, so that's a lowercase q. Now, with ethylamine, there is something interesting here in the fact that if we extend out these hydrogens on the nitrogen atom, what do we see? One, two, three. So those hydrogens are three bonds away. So HC should couple with HB, but it doesn't. So let's go and look at the NMR spectrum. Okay. Do you see what, what we've done here? We expected one, two, three signals. Good. And then we said, hey, that was going to be a triplet, which it is. We said this guy was going to be a quartet, which it is. Now the question, or what the observation that we make here is that these protons right here, HB, do not couple with those protons. So that's one thing that we need to, a rule that you need to understand. When there are at hydrogens within three bonds from one another, but if the hydrogens are attached to a heteroatom, and heteroatoms are atoms that are not carbon, if they're attached to a heteroatom, they do not couple. So HB does not couple with HC. Remember, let's label those. So that's HA, that's B, and that's HC. Does not couple with hydrogens on heteroatoms. And what do we notice here? HC, do you see how that's just a broad, we call that a broad singlet. 
So you wouldn't just label it as an S for singlet. You would actually write it out, say broad singlet. And this one would be a quartet, and that would be a triplet. That's how you would label it. And so what we've noticed here is that HC doesn't couple with HB. So we have that general rule there. Hetero atoms, the protons on hetero atoms don't couple. So we could take this molecule and change it up a bit, and we would get a very similar NMR spectrum. So if I had that molecule, this methyl group would still have the same splitting pattern. And these methylenes would have the same splitting pattern. So do you see here what, what I've exchanged out? Is I exchanged out that nitrogen for an oxygen. So I'm just giving you another example here. So this hydrogen right here would give us another broad singlet. Now, why is that the case? Well, the reason why this happens is because, let's see, find it here. The reason why this is the case is because heteroatoms like nitrogen and oxygen, they have a complex nature or a hydrogen bonding network. And when you have a complex uh, bonding network, by hydrogen bondings, those protons attached to the heteroatoms can skip around and move all over the place. And the NMR is just not fast enough to take a picture before that those hydrogens on those heteroatoms keep moving around. And so the NMR instrument is simply just taking an average signal of these protons jumping all over the place. So because it's taking an average, it is just going to give us a broad singlet. It's not going to couple. It, there's no time for it to really couple because of the hydrogen bonding network here. That's the reason why, and that is something to be aware of. The next video we are going to now talk about uh, what's called J-coupling constants.